Joining me now is Bart Jaworski, CEO and co-founder of uh, Group 11 Resources. Good to see you again. Likewise, Mark. So uh, we've seen each other off camera, but we haven't done this for maybe about 18 months. And it's really interesting how uh, one of your assets, uh, Ballywire in Ireland, the, the story has really changed. It's not just zinc anymore. You're, you're uh, discovering lead, silver, copper, germanium as well. So uh, bring us up to speed here. Yeah, we're 44 holes into it over 2.6 kilometers. So we're getting consistent, robust mineralization over 2.6 kilometers along a six kilometer trend defined by four gravity high anomalies. And only one of those gravity high anomalies is where we've drilled. And so we've got three more to go. Uh, so we really, this year, we'd like to really spread our wings and test for that. You mentioned the germanium we're getting in January, we put out a news release where we're showcasing that we have elevated germanium over our t total discovery area to date. 10 to 40 grams or uh, 80 grams per ton, actually, um, per ton. We can get to that, uh, I guess, a little later on. But the copper is really interesting. You mentioned copper. So we have a number of pierce points now where we've drilled through and we're hitting these feeder zones. And these feeder zones have a lot of silver, up to 1400 grams per ton, and also multi percent coppers. And that copper and silver has to be coming from somewhere down below. So we have that on one hand, that piece of information. On the other hand, we also know the stratigraphy of the geology of the area. And we know the stratigraphy is 100 meters below our discovery horizon. There is something called the lower limestone shale. Well, that unit just happens to host three copper silver deposits in our neck of the woods. So within 5, 10 and 45 kilometers away from Valley Wire, we have these three copper deposits. So you put it one on one together and you all of a sudden you have a very scientific uh, evidence or a lot of scientific evidence to suggest that we may have a copper silver horizon underneath our uh, zinc horizon, which ob obviously would be fantastic. Interesting. Now, uh, back to germanium here. It's used in AI chips. Uh, China has uh, uh, restricted exports of it, basically. So uh, how does this fit into the Group 11 story? How significant is, is it and how, how big could this be for you potentially? It's a nice, it's certainly a nice sweetener, but it's also a geopolitical yeah, sweetener fun. as well. It's very strategic for us. Obviously, having germanium on European soil would be of interest to North America, I think to Europeans as well. Um, like I said, it's 10 to 80 grams per ton we're getting. If you, if the, if you look at the U.S. Geological Survey, for example, uh, they point to the Kapushi mine as being uh, one of the highest grading germanium zinc deposits out there. And it's grading between, I think it's around 64 grams per ton. So that's, you know, germanium doesn't concentrate very well in the Earth's crust. And the highest you can get is usually about that sort of 60, 70 mark per, per ton, whole rock wise. Uh, so I think we're doing pretty well. So it's an, it's, it's an interesting uh, start. There's a lot more work for us to be doing there, but it's looking good. So in September, the team started drilling at uh, Karakittal West. Uh, you've called this a mirror image to uh, Glencore's uh, Palace Green mine. So can you elaborate on that and, and the work that you're doing? Yeah, Karakittal West is interesting in that it is a lookalike to Glencore's Palace Green deposit. Palace Green, of course, being one of the largest undeveloped zinc deposits in the world. And so uh, Glencore has that on the north side of the circular volcanic feature. So if you imagine this table, the north side has got Palace Green and our Stone Park deposit right beside us. That's 45 million tons of 8.4%, right beside 5 million tons of 11.3%. That's sitting right there. And it's associated with this volcanic feature. On the south side, identical geology, plus a major fault running through it, which should make it even more perspective. And the only difference between the north side and the south side is the north side has been explored very, very uh, uh, thoroughly by previous operators, but the south side has never been explored until we came along and we started drilling some preliminary holes. So we drilled a little bit before Christmas and we should have the results out on that at the end of this quarter. Very good. Now, speaking of Glencore, they own about 70% of the shares of Group 11. So does Michael Gentili, who is familiar to Red Cloud viewers, very well-known commodity investor. I'm just wondering how you describe the shareholder base and not only that, how, how it allows you maybe some flexibility in the things that you can do. Yeah, we've been blessed, I guess, in strong shareholder support through Glencore, through Michael Gentile. And of course, fantastic to have Michael Gentile now having uh, having basically joined the board over the last few months. That's been absolutely fantastic. And he really looked at us saying, look, we've been backer of you guys for uh, four years or so now. The Valley Wire Discovery looks to be one of the best, or it looks to be like the real thing. So I'm happy to, to jump on. So it's, it's great to have him on board. And obviously with Mike, he brings a lot of other people, a lot of attention to the story as well. So it's, it's uh, really allowed us to spread our wings and, uh, and get better valuations out there. 
Lastly, Bart, go out a few years if, if you could. Well, what is the actual vision, the long-term plan, the, the end game, do you think? Well, I think it's important to note that our discovery at Ballywire is only 20 kilometers away from Palace Green and Stone Park. So you have some critical mass sitting there, not too far away from us, within trucking distance, if you will. And it won't take much for us to light up the camp. So I think that's kind of the end goal. That's where we're driving towards is, you know, we, we have a, we have terrific geology in Ireland. We have infrastructure, which is super, super key for base metal projects. You have the stable politics and a good mining code on top of it. And then more specifically to our area, you have some really interesting dynamics with a lot of mineralized material sitting here and then a new discovery sort of budding. So I think we've got a lot of good things going for us here. So uh, reading between the lines, uh, as you continue to to prove it out and it, it becomes what you think it is, then Glencore would really be interested. I can't speak for Glencore, <laughs> no, <you> but uh, <laughs> potentially. Potentially, you know, we yeah. have uh, Glencore, South 32 is next to us. You have Belieden in the camp. There's There was a story in the Irish papers written about a couple of weeks ago talking about a potential new entrant into the mining situation within Ireland. There's 30 million euros that's going to be spent by the Irish government through the Irish Investment Fund. Uh, so there's a lot of, and, and then the CRMA passed on the European level with the Critical Raw Materials Act. And of course, mining is now sort of front page news globally uh, speaking. So uh, not to mention the T word, but uh, <laughs> so uh, I think there's a lot of interesting things going on macro wise and micro here with us. Thanks, Bart. Great. Appreciate it. Yeah, Thanks, okay. Mark. We'll see you again. Bart Jaworski, Group 11 Resources.